Philippines gets the first Brahmos from India. It's the game changer supersonic cruise missile. India takes the fight to Chinese waters. Made in India missiles track Chinese warships. Bharat's big Brahmos boom. That's our top focus on India first. Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast. I'm Gaurav Savant. In a major geostrategic move with far-reaching implications, the first of the Made in India Brahmos supersonic cruise missiles reached the Clark International Airport in Philippines to be deployed along Philippines' west coast, the West Philippine Sea, to counter an expansionist China. Several other countries, including Indonesia and Vietnam, have shown interest in the Brahmos supersonic cruise missile. Will the Brahmos sail to Philippines prove to be a game changer? And what's the message to China? We get you more in our top story. The C-17 Globemaster heavy lift transport aircraft of the Indian Air Force lands at the Clark International Airport in Philippines, carrying the first of the three batteries of the BrahMos missiles from India. BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles are the fastest in the world, capable of cruising at almost three times the speed of sound, making them virtually impossible to destroy. Philippines has acquired three batteries of the India-Russia joint venture missiles made in India as part of the $375 million deal inked with the Narendra Modi government in 2022. <laughs> थोड़ी देर में चल पड़ेगा इस मिसाइल का पहला बेच आज फिलिपीन जा रहा है इंडिया's ब्रह्मोस मिसाइल डील विद फिलिपींस इज एन एब्सोल्यूट गेम चेंजर बोथ फॉर फिलिपींस एंड फॉर इंडिया एंड अ क्लियर जियोस्ट्रेटिजिक मैसेज टू चाइना इन द साउथ चाइना सी इंडिया इज सेट टू प्रोवाइड three BrahMos missile batteries to Philippines. The package includes training for operations and maintenance. It includes integrated logistics support. One battery has three autonomous missile launchers and one tracking system. The BrahMos system with a range of almost 300 kilometers will provide security to the Philippines coast in the West Philippine Sea. I'm sure over the coming years, exports are going to become a very important part of our portfolio. We have also now receiving interest for Brahmos, of course, we have exported to Philippines and we are receiving interest for other countries. Akash is seeing a lot of interest. So going forward, a lot of our products will get export orders. Both India and Philippines have sent out a strong geostrategic signal in the South China Sea with Indian missiles now deployed in the region. The Philippines Army also plans a follow-up order to the $375 million deal. The BrahMos missiles can be launched from submarines, ships, aircraft and land-based platforms. Apart from Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam and Indonesia have shown a keen interest in the missile system. Bureau Report, India Today. So what's the significance of the sale of BrahMos to Philippines? 
Indian missiles now in South China Sea. What does this mean? Joining me for more on this huge development is Professor Brahma Chilani, one of India's most well-respected scholars and China watchers. Also with me is Captain D.K. Sharma, former spokesperson of the Indian Navy, someone who keeps a keen eye on all developments from the North Arabian Sea to the South China Sea. And of course, the finest defense editor in the country, India today's Shivarur. And Shiv, I want to begin by asking you, this step is being described as a game changer, a win-win both for India and for Philippines. That is correct, uh, Gaurav. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Philippines uh, military requirements are being met in some part by the Brahmos uh, that has been exported by India. Very, very significant for India, first of all, because this is the first export of the Brahmos uh, cruise missile system, uh, which is about 78% Indian now. It's a joint venture between India and Russia, but it is largely an Indian weapon system that has been exported to Philippines. So, uh, in terms of defense exports, it's a huge landmark achievement and a milestone that the first deliveries have just taken place with those amazing pictures coming in uh, from the Philippines. But the geopolitical and the geostrategic aspect of it is far bigger than just a handful of coastal missile batteries, Gaurav. As you understand it, the South China Sea has been hotting up for a very, very long time. Countries like Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia and others have been looking to India uh, you know, for support, not just in terms of uh, you know, game-changing military hardware like the, you know, like the Brahmos, which is uh, basically basically a land-based anti-ship system, which is the configuration in which the Philippines have bought. Uh, but it's also a demonstration that India is willing to play the game. Remember, this didn't happen overnight. It's yes. taken many years to actually take place. India has often been uh, you know, perceived uh, you know, by the international order as being reluctant to go up against China in any big material or visible or uh, demonstrable ways. But by giving a country like Philippines right there in the South China Sea, a country that has real conflict and friction over the South China Sea with China uh, and giving that country anti-ship weapon systems, the kind of systems that pose a real threat to Chinese warships and hegemony in the South China Sea. Uh, you know, a weapon system, if you look at technically, very is very difficult to intercept oh, and absolutely. in many ways is perceived as a game changer. This is proof that India is finally, in some ways, playing the game, Gaurav. The only country in the world so far standing up to China or, or expansionist forces in the region. Professor Brahma Chilani, few understand China better than you. Is Philippines here standing up to Chinese bullying and is India perhaps the only country that can actually stand up to China and has been in the past several years? Sir, is there a signal that goes out? Is this, does this put a spanner in China's work, sir? Well, there are two things. First, um, India has locked horns with China in a way that no other power, not even the United States, has done in this century. Militarily, India has taken on China, and now this standoff with China is entering the fifth year. As far as the Philippines is concerned, it's very interesting to note that Philippines is a close ally of the United States. The two have a mutual defense treaty. Yet the Americans have been unwilling to extend support to the Philippines beyond issuing statements of support. So what we have seen over the years, especially since 2012, is that China has been able to erode Philippines' control of areas within the Philippines' own exclusive economic zone. And therefore, now the Philippines, under the new president, Marcos Jr., is trying to be assertive. It's trying to defense its, defend its territory. And therefore, this particular deal with India for the Brahmos is an important step for Philippines to mount a more assertive defense against Chinese encroachments. That's a big step. Remember, Brahmos is virtually invincible. This is a supersonic cruise missile that actually travels almost three times the speed of sound. So it's almost impossible to intercept it. But Admiral, uh, I also want to bring in Captain D.K. Sharma into this conversation. Captain Sharma, Brahmos, a supersonic cruise missile, is this, is this aimed to checkmate China? 
and not just in the South China Sea, but the signal goes out from Philippines, a bigger signal, sir, goes out from India. Of course, uh, Gaurav, what you're saying is absolutely right. Now, there's three batteries which have been delivered today or which have been, you know, transshipped by C-17s today to Manila. These are likely, these are the uh, ground batteries from here. We can launch the BrahMos missile and 99% they are going to be put at Scarborough Shoal or the, you know, Prattlis where there is a little problem and uh, Philippines are facing a lot of heat over there. Yes, this is absolutely a game changer because uh, this first shows the intent that here am I and I'm not going to, you know, uh, be, you know, put down by the threats which the Chinese are doing by, you know, non-state actors of IUU fishing and their maritime militia, which we have been reading about very, very frequently nowadays in the South China Sea. So, yes, a very big statement by India. That is the diplomatic prowess of India. And it is also, you know, showing that how we value the strategic partnership between us and Philippines. And also, it will also give the signal to other literals of the South China Sea that India is here to extend the help, whether it is uh, by hardware of, or by the soft power. So that is what I have to say. Okay. Shiv, Philippines is not limiting its order just to three batteries. There are reports that there could be a follow-up order, and this time from the Philippines Army. And as Captain Sharma was also mentioning, and uh, Professor Brahma Chilani, there are other countries, including Vietnam and Indonesia, who are interested. So these are countries impacted uh, by an expansionist China. And seeing India's response, whether it was in uh, Dolom in 2017 or Galwan in 2020, and the fact, as Professor Chirani pointed out, that this standoff has been on since 2020, now mid-2024, India stands up to China and India gives other countries the strength and military hardware to stand up to China that even America was not, Shiv. You know, Gaurav, the, uh, the export licensing of the Brahmos is a, uh, you know, is truly a tragic tale as far as geopolitics and local politics is concerned. Uh, you know, I can tell you that I knew, uh, you know, the former CEO of Brahmos, uh, Mr. Sudhir Mishra, and before that, Dr. Sivatanu Pillai as well. Yes. And I can tell you, it has been a decades-long sob story of how the DRDO and, uh, you know, Brahmos Corporation have wanted to export the Brahmos to, you know, friendly uh, customers in other countries, but have, you know, not been able to do so because of political sensitivities that date back to earlier government dispensations. Now, this isn't about, you know, one dispensation or another. You know, there have been compulsions about friendly countries, whether they will be friendly, whether India should be seen as a country that exports weapons. Does India really want to enter the international arms export market? All of that has changed because of the China paradigm. Uh, and, uh, you know, like you rightly said, Philippines is the first export customer of the Brahmos, but countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, uh, in the southeast, but also countries like Argentina, Brazil and others have also been interested in the Brahmos and it's actually quite telling that India has taken its time in, you know, in meeting the needs of many of these countries. I understand that Vietnam or Indonesia could be the next big customer, uh, you know, of the Brahmos. But the, the point is that this isn't just about one, you know, very, very high performance weapon system. It's hardly about just a missile system or a coastal battery. That capability is extremely important the larger strategic message is much, much bigger. As uh, Professor Chelani said, India is the only country that has militarily locked horns uh, with China, uh, you know, either willingly or perforce like we've seen in Ladakh. But the fact is, by sending these missiles to a country like the Philippines that has a direct interface over the South China Sea, uh, you know, with a country that only believes in hegemony, India has sent out perhaps the strongest message about the levels to which it is willing to go against China at this time. And Professor Chilani, if China gets bogged down in South China Sea, will it, will it impact or adversely impact China's power projection capabilities in the Indian Ocean region? Definitely, because the South China Sea is the critical cor corridor connecting the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. But actually, the situation is quite different. It is that China very aggressively is seeking to tighten its grip on the South China Sea. Its tactics range from shadowing and hounding smaller neighbors' vessels 
and harassing their offshore oil and gas operations to regularizing patrols of other countries' exclusive economic zones so as to assert expansive territorial claims of fishing and energy exploration rights. In effect, what China has been doing is that in breach of the Hague ruling in 2016, an international arbitral tribunal at the Hague ruled yes. that China's claims in the South China Sea are actually unfounded. And in fact, they have no basis in international law. Absolutely. And yet what China has done through brute might is that it has effectively redrawn the geopolitical map of the South China Sea. Even the U.S. is unwilling to really stand up to China in the South China Sea. Many American commentators are talking about how the U.S. has lost the South China Sea. So there's a fundamental shift in the ground situation in the South China Sea. So if there is this fundamental shift, Professor Chilani, <laughs> before I bring in Captain Sharma, will just three batteries of Brahmos, is, is this just an intent? Because the Philippines has a, uh, has, has a large area to protect, uh, as does Indonesia, uh, uh, and as does Vietnam. How will things change with India's intent, a decision that was taken in 2022 by the Narendra Modi government? How will the equation change in your view, Professor Chilani? Well, from the Indian standpoint, this first shipment of Brahmos to the Philippines is quite important because it marks India's entry in the international export market. But from a strategic perspective, looking at it from the Philippines perspective, three batteries of Brahmos aren't going to change the fundamentals. Absolutely. Yet, the fact that the Philippines, a close US ally, has chosen to buy the Indo-Russian Brahmos is highly significant. It's highly significant also for the reason that India needs Russia's permission yes. for exporting Brahmos. And the first customer of Brahmos is a country that is tied to the US by a mutual defense treaty. I think geopolitically, that's very significant. It also conveys that the Philippines is desperate. It has not received the kind of support that it expected from the US and therefore it's seeking to shore up its own defenses by buying equipment of the kind that India is offering. Absolutely. Professor, let me also bring in Captain Sharma into this conversation because Captain Sharma, Brahmos is seen as a win-win. Win-win for India, win-win for Philippines. High technology system, which is extremely affordable. About $375 million for, for this deal. But Apart from Brahmos, are there other weapons in India's arsenal that would interest, one, the region, two, the world? It's a very competitive defense market globally. Uh, look, uh, Shiv, HAL is doing their best. They just will be up and running, and then it will enter the export market. Then we have uh, an array of uh, helicopters, which are also in various stages. So all this is going to be there, and our shipbuilding. Remember, our shipbuilding, our warship building is pretty, pretty advanced. And our destroyers are the latest, our, our latest destroyers of the Kolkata class and all are as comparable to the already book class destroyers of US. So all this is open. And uh, as per our honorable prime minister's, you know, the policy of security and growth for all in the region, if you can't make it, please buy it from us. And we are open. And this is what I was trying to bring out. The intent is very clear. Indian government has, you know, uh, helped Philippines in whatever, you know, it took some time. Okay. And this deal was signed in Jan 22. And now after two years, we are doing the delivery. So the intent and the signal is very clear that India will help the smaller neighbors and the littles where this problem is now showing its head. Yes. China is not going to, you know, back down. And uh, this high-handedness of China has to be curbed one way or the other. And I, I, I strongly believe Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, all of them have understood now that if the direct support is not coming from the big power, then there has to be a collaborative effort. And this is where I see it. Okay. That a small, this intent of putting a battery in one of the shoals will certainly, you know, raise eyebrows in China 
that what has happened and why this it's, you know, particular it, it will raise thing hackles making. but how is yes. how is china likely to react before i bring in shiv professor chilani how is china expected to react uh, it it would take notice or will it continue um, you know it's it's brazen game of brinkmanship in the south china sea and test whether a battery like this would be used or or even brandished by countries like philippines right now the issue for the philippines is the effort by china to block Philippine supply missions to the second Thomas Shoal. Yes. Now, the second Thomas Shoal could become a trigger for a larger crisis in the South China Sea. Philippines lost control of Scarborough Shoal in 2012. The Americans watched silently under President Obama, did nothing about the Chinese occupation of uh, Scarborough Shoal. And now the real test is about the Second Thomas Shoal. So to defend Second Thomas Shoal and to defend other territories it has within its own exclusive economic zone, the Philippines needs to shore up anti-ship systems. And the BrahMos is a good addition to Philippines' arsenal. As far as what China's reaction would be, China is a very major exporter of weapon systems to different countries, especially to India's neighbors. Its yes. biggest arms clients are India's neighbors, Pakistan, yes, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar. These are the biggest clients of China. Uh, China has, in fact, even provided Pakistan with Submarines. not just conventional weapon systems, but also with nuclear warhead designs and complete missile systems. So in comparison, India shipping three batteries of BrahMos uh, missiles to the Philippines looks like small play. Okay. And, and therefore, the Chinese reaction is going to be only uh, a muted response. But I think in the larger scheme of things, what China is observing is that now India is coming of age, that India is becoming not only assertive along the Himalayan frontier, it's willing to challenge Chinese power and capability in a way that no previous government in India did, but also that India is now trying to become a player in the international arms market. That is significant because in recent years, we have seen how domestically in India, yes, private industry has entered the defense sector and the defense sector in India is now the fastest growing sector of the Indian economy. Significant, you should say that. So India's standing up to China, and that's a shift, as Professor Brahma Chilani rightly points out, that's come with the Narendra Modi government. But Shiv, India standing up to Chinese bullying tactics, from the QPQ operations to the Sela Tunnel to Dolum to the testing of the Agni 5 MIRV to the sale of Brahmos to the Philippines. How do all these developments add up? Join the dots, Shiv. You know, uh, Gaurav, uh, it's interesting when you say join the dots because, you know, as you and I know, uh, and we've, been, you know, you've reported from Ladakh as well during this entire, uh, you know, standoff that Professor Chelani reminds us is entering its fifth year. You know, it's amazing to actually think about it like that because it feels like it just happened yesterday. Uh, the fact is it's taken a while for India, uh, you know, to more than just push back, uh, yes. you know, because India has, uh, uh, you know, has had some sensitivities about being seen by the international order, you know, as a country that shows anything that comes even near aggression. But I think the last four years have been, uh, you know, a, perhaps an even bigger learning experience than the long military history that we actually have with China, Absolutely. including the 1962 war. And I think all of those dots you mentioned right now represent a changing mindset, a changing culture that seeps down, uh, you know, uh, not just a foreign policy, military diplomacy, uh, but also just India's way of thinking. And I think that's what's 
being manifested here. The fact that infrastructure is happening at you know at, you know at, at a very very uh, uh, you know uh, fast pace. Whether it is the Sela Tunnel in Arunachal Pradesh, whether it is a continuing infrastructure build up, which was the initial trigger for the standoff, we understand it. Uh, you know in eastern Ladakh, to things that are happening in Uttarakhand, which haven't been reported just yet, yes. to the continuing situation south of the Pangong, uh, you know th that we know uh, some of which cannot actually be reported. So uh, uh, you know these are these are things that all add up to a much larger, uh, I think, picture as far as uh, as far as China is concerned. And I think much more, many India. more things will happen uh, going forward as well. Absolutely, a more assertive India. To the finest panel of guests for joining me here on this India Today special broadcast. Many thanks. We will continue to track developments on the story very closely. Remember what Rashtrakavi Ramdhari Singh Dinkar also said. Sach poochho to, shar mein hi basti hai deepti vinay ki, sandhi vachan sam poojje usi ka, jis mein shakti vijay ki. It's only power that is respected, it's power that's worshipped. Many thanks for watching.